Hello, welcome. My name is Jay Cummings, and this is the first video in a planned sequence of videos in which I will discuss the main content of this book, Proofs, a long form mathematics textbook, which I wrote. Um, so for most of these videos, my plan is for it's basically lecture style. I'll be at the whiteboard, probably holding notes, probably just talking to you. Um, but chapter one is a little different because I have a bunch of animations that I plan to make. And this first video is very different because I'm just going to be sitting in this chair discussing the first page of the book. That's it. This, this is going to be a short video. I'll discuss the first page of the book. Um, so this is before we even get to section 1.1. I make an argument that, uh, that you are about to undergo a phase change in your math education. That the math you studied before you, you, you study proofs is just starkly different from the math that you study after. Um, so to make this argument, I begin by including a passage from this book. This is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I hope all the viewers have read this. If you have not, just stop, stop watching this video. Go check out this book. It's very good. You'll have a great time. It's so fun. And actually, that would work pretty well because the, the quote I'm about to read to you, I think it's from the last page of this book, maybe the second to last page. Um, but uh, so it'll be perfect. You'll finish it. You'll read the passage I'm about to read and you come back and then we'll continue. So let me read this to you. Actually, I thought I was going to read it to you, uh, but then I had the idea, why would I read it to you when you, we could have Douglas Adams read it to you? Okay. So he is the author of this book and, uh, and he's going to read it to you. So let me scoot over. Yeah, so that's him right there. Uh, okay, let's listen to Douglas Adams read this passage. The history of every major galactic civilization tends to pass through three distinct and recognizable phases, those of survival, inquiry, and sophistication, otherwise known as the how, why, and where phases. For instance, the first phase is characterized by the question, how can we eat? The second by the question, why do we eat? And the third, by the question, where shall we have lunch? Okay, so there you have it. Now, what I argue is that your mathematics education will also pass through these, basically through these same three phases. The first phase of your math education is characterized by the question, how can I solve this problem? Like, how can I solve this integral? The second phase is characterized by the question, why does my solution work? And the third phase by the question, where should we explore next? Okay, so indeed, your, your phase one math classes were probably focused on computation, like how to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to solve a problem. Okay. In your phase two math classes, you will start to understand why the fundamental theorem of calculus is true. Why is it even true? Why does it work? Um, in your earlier phase one math classes, you were taught to use, say, the quadratic formula to solve second degree polynomials. But in your phase two math classes, you understand, well, why does that formula work? Why does it always give me the correct answer? Furthermore, you will learn that there are similar formulas for a general third degree polynomial and fourth degree polynomial, but not the general fifth degree polynomial. There was a formula for third, for second, third, fourth, but not fifth. That's strange. Why? Why would that be the case? Well, you will see precisely why in one of your future phase two math classes. Um, your future classes will also introduce you to a lot of topics that simply did not appear at all in your phase one courses. In fact, I think the most interesting topics are reserved entirely for your phase two classes. Some topics, uh, they could have introduced them earlier, but they just, probably for most of you, you just hasn't, have, you have never seen it before. And well, at this point, maybe that's good news because you have a lot to look forward to. A lot of fun stuff is ahead of you in all these proof-based uh, math classes. Uh, so this book and these videos are designed to be this initial step into this second phase of mathematics. 
Uh, the book will show you, and these videos will show you, uh, the techniques that mathematicians use to understand our math, uh, which we call proof techniques. And uh, we will just, you will be introduced to new math topics that you will explore in much greater detail in your future courses. So buckle up, math class is about to get a lot more interesting. Um, I per personally, I did not like math before, like in high school, middle school, elementary school, I was not a big fan of math class. It was fine, you know, I was good enough at it that it was, it was, you know, it was fine, but I did not enjoy it. Um, and I am so happy that I took a, sec a couple phase two math classes uh, before I pursued my plan. My plan was to become an engineer and ugh, thank God I didn't do that. Um, very happy that I, uh, I, I explored this, this uh, deeper side of math and I fell in love with it. I never looked back and I hope, I hope the same for you. So we all need some engineers out there. So, but uh, <laughs> but I'm glad that uh, that I am not one of them. Uh, you can follow your own path. Uh, so that's basically the end for this video. Uh, next video we will begin section 1.1 from the book. Um, we will study what are called chessboard problems. These are problems which are literally they're, they are best phrased in terms of a chessboard and some dominoes covering up the squares of the chessboard. Uh, they're very good problems. Uh, one, they are, you can sort of, in, you can sort of understand proofs intuitively. You can just jump right into them using these problems. Um, there are also fun problems and they feel more like puzzles. Like if you're just coming out of calculus, these are going to feel like little silly toy puzzles, not real math. Well, you'll be surprised when that real mathematicians actually care about these problems. And, um, and moreover, they highlight this deeper idea, which is that math is no longer about numbers and computation. Math will, from now on, be about ideas. And that's captured well in these chessboard problems. So tune in next time, and we will talk about chessboard problems.